Right, so last year I had a trip to Sweden, as you saw. Um, a lot of you asked me about uh, how I got here and where I stayed and all this lot. Cause we all we all see the videos and you know watch Canal Grace and free water pictures and things like that. And Matt Hayes in the old days, Mick Brown and you know Dave Gelrick and all these guys coming and fishing in Sweden. And we've all we've all dreamt of it. Well, um, I like him and last time I stopped with Gary Benny, who's um, a very nice person. But um, that's not your answer. You, he's not going to let you all keep on his city. So. Um, We've come up with a, a better solution, which is these guys. They, this is uh, Jovan and Christian, uh, fellow American tacklers, um, and basically they, they run a camp uh, on, on the Baltic, um, catchbigger.se, and um, so I'm still going to stay with these guys for a week. Uh, we have three different accommodations. Uh, we got Sjöstugan, what is more for two to three persons yeah, maximum, maximum three, three person yeah. i would say there is four beds inside but we don't recommend four people it's like it's too small yeah, so yeah, yeah. maximum three people in there yeah and that's for real fishermen yeah it's yeah, like yeah. for real no fishermen. dish uh, washer and stuff like that yeah so. no telly no dishwasher yeah. uh yeah. you got of course toilet and shower inside yeah. like we got it in all the accommodation and like 30 meter to the boat yeah yeah approximately yeah yeah and uh, then we have a bit bigger house Kyrketorp. it's uh what can it be 100 square meter two yeah. two level uh, we have six beds plus two extra beds yeah uh, four beds in the, the big house and then we have a smaller house with uh, two extra beds yeah, yeah with two beds yeah, two so beds, it's yeah. all together six beds yeah. four plus two and then we got two extra beds, so it could be up to eight people there. Yeah. So that's a good uh, accommodation if you are a bigger group, for example. Then we even have uh, the boathouse. It's like the third and... Yeah, it's the m our most popular yeah, house. The yeah. most popular accommodation yeah. that we have. Yeah. It's a bit more luxury. Uh, and it is it is what it sounds like. It is a boathouse. Yeah, so it's an apartment an upstairs. Yeah. So, yeah. You just walk down the stairs and you come to the boat, so yeah. go out and in a dry boat. Yeah. Like, super. So those are the three different accommodations what we have. Yeah, and boat house is the same, six to eight beds. Yeah. Six exactly. normal beds, two extra beds. Yeah. And uh, to all the house, we have, uh, we got two different options uh, for boat. We have uh, Sandström, we got four of them. A Swedish made uh, plastic boat. Yeah, four yeah. meter 95 long, equipped with uh, 50 horsepower, yeah. four stroke four Honda. Stroke, yeah. And the uh, Lowrance Elite 7 uh, so GPS and fish finder. Yeah. Well, yeah. Of, of course, anchor and yeah. life jackets and everything. Landing net yeah. and everything like that is provided by, by us, yeah. so you don't need to fly with it or take it with you. Yeah. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, aluminium boats, uh, Buster L, yeah. uh, around 5 meter, 504. Yeah, and they are also equipped with uh, 50 horsepower engine. Yeah, perfect for the Baltic uh, in tough condition, in wind, you you can always go out. Yeah. Like today? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, we also got the uh, motor guide electric... Uh, Front uh, roller. Yeah for one of the Buster yeah. that you can rent. Yeah, and the Buster also have uh, low-rance HS9 plus HS5. Yes. Yeah. Echo Sonar. Yeah. Uh, and of course, all the boats are equipped with landing net, uh, with uh, anchor, with uh, yeah everything what you need in the boat. What you need to bring is uh, a decent plier yeah. to unhook the fish. Yeah. Uh, a first aid could be good, or what do you think, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> In case of accident. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we also recommend the first timer in Baltic to take the first day guiding. It's a uh, big water, and if you only have one week to find the fish, it's uh, yeah. Uh, it's a big water, and mm. it's quite different to lake and river and canal fishing. Yeah. So it's a bit to get your head around. Yeah, I but it's not. Yeah. 
it's mm -hmm. not impossible. No, but I can say for that, it's a lot, a lot of water. It's, everywhere does look pikey, but you need to kind of understand a little bit how yeah. the fish are working, exactly. what's, what's actually going on, don't you? And that, yeah. that's a little bit, mo it's a bit more, a bit different to what the people from England are used to going to a, a, a lock gates or a weirpool or something like that, which is an obvious feature. But on this place, you just you pull into a you pull into a bay which is just yeah, exactly. massive but it's tiny compared to the Baltic and that's that's the difference so I, I would say you need at least a day. Yeah and you are the guide and you've been guiding in the Baltic for the last is it now ten years or uh, it's more than ten years. More than ten yeah. years yeah. You know your way around. Have you always guided here? No, I was a full time guide for like six, seven years in Vestervik. So, and then I have been guiding in Stockholm, around mm. Stockholm, and yeah, I have been around a bit in Sweden. Yeah. But always in the Baltic. Flights, you're not actually going to Stockholm, which is what we did last time. Flights to Stockholm seem to be easier. Um, but I found that if you went to um, London, Stansted, and you flew from there, you could direct to, um, Stockholm Skavster, is that how I pronounce it right? Skavster, yeah. Skavster. Um, and that's that's closer to these guys. Um, you're a good three hours and more away from Stockholm, so you need to you go from uh, Stansted to uh, Skavster, and it pretty much cost me about 150 quid. That's including car parking, so uh, a little bit less. Um, so, but one thing, one tip that I'll give you is um, traveling. If you, if you just book a, a, a ticket. Uh, like a, a return, what you get is um, often dodgy times. So I, I just did single both ways, like trips, and got got a better deal and picked a better time. Like when I return, I'm I'm going at like midday rather than six o'clock in the morning. That means you know getting up at two and three a.m. So so choose your times. It um, makes it a lot easier for you. Um, things that you need to bring, as you can see, Sweden's a bit of a brutal place for weather. And like today, you need to bring some really warm gear because it's absolutely freezing. <laughs> you know, um, when it when it comes, it, it does get cold. It will, it will whatever minus one this morning we set off. Um, so when you're on the boats, uh, you do freeze your tits off. Uh, so get some good quality um, waterproof, windproof outer layers, and then some nice thermal long johns and some something a bit padded and warmer for, in, for underneath. Uh, low wise, god you saw some lows earlier on in the, in the video. Um, I've been mostly catching on Buster Jerk, uh, Gator Gum and Spinnerbait. Uh, that's been mainly the lows that I've, I've seemed to have caught on. But um, shallow fishing, any any soft plastic's going to work. Uh, like I said, Spinnerbait lets you get into cover and fishing a little mur murky water. Buster jerk to mix it up. Um, don't, uh, we're not fishing deep water, so don't get, don't bring anything that goes too deep. Um, rod wise, you can get um, tra the travel tubes and things for your plane, and that's going to cost you about 30, 35 quid, I think it is with Ryanair. So it's not too bad if you want to bring all your own rods. Because obviously we've not really done any, but there's perch fishing and zander fishing as well here, so you can bring a selection of gear if you wanted to get one of rod tubes and stick it, stick your gear on, on plane. Um, you don't have to bring too much after that, really. When, um, it depends what kind of fishing you've done. I mean, I've not, I've not been somebody going out partying every night, so I've just brought, brought my fishing clothes, good set of everything. Like I said, decent shoes, some quality shoes, keep your feet warm. I mean, especially if you come in the, in the winter months, it's it's really cold, and you you can feel it in your toes, you know, on cold boats. Um, uh, like I said, I've not been not been going out on a night for you know for nightlife. It's it's, more, it's all. Um, I'll, I'll sleep in and, and then fishing, so it depends what kind of holiday you need, what kind of water you want. But uh, if if you get the chance, if you've got a bit of pocket money saved up, I do recommend coming. It's just, as you've seen from the videos, it's just a stunning place. There's so much water to go at. Um, even when it's even when it's been hard, you're still looking, and every little every little corner looks pikey as hell, and you're just thinking, I'm going to catch a fish here. And, it just keeps you going all day. Before you know it, sun's gone down, and you, you're thinking, "Oh, that's it. I want to keep going." So, uh, have a, have a get, get saving up. Um, if you come in summer, I'm sure you can bring your last with it. It's 
I mean, where would you, where else would you want to be in somewhere like this? Just relaxing. 